Hey everybody, Nick Dolman here. Today we're going to take a look at the new enhancements to Visual Studio Code specifically for Power Pages. What we're going to do is we're going to create a web page, but we're not going to use the Design Studio. We're going to build everything 100% within, within Visual Studio Code. But before we do that, just want to remind everybody, check out our new podcast, the Power Platform Boost podcast, where Ulrike Ackerbeck and I talk about all the new and exciting things in the Power Platform. So the first thing we're going to do is install VS Code, of course, but then the next thing you want to do is install the Power Platform Tools extensions. So be sure to grab that. Just type in the in extensions, go Power Platform Tools, install easy as pie and then you also want to set your icon theme set that to the power apps portals icons that way it's going to show the proper icons when we're seeing our portal tools the other thing you need to do is make sure you run um, or have installed node.js if you've not done that yet you should do that before you install power platform tools and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go off into our dev directory and what we're going to do is we're going to use the pack CLI and we're going to download first we're going to select the environment so I've typed in PAC org select dash environment the GUID of my environment that I copied earlier and it's going to connect so we're connected to the right environment next thing I want to do is using the pack CLI tools we're going to want to download our website metadata and first off let's see what websites we have on this particular environment oh, we have one cool Next thing we're going to want to do is download that one. So we're going to, again, use our pack commands, PAC, PAC, PA portal. Then download. We need to specify the path where we want to download. I'm just going to put it in my dev directory for now. And of course, I could tie that up to GitHub later for source control. And I'm going to copy the ID of the website. And again, that's that GUID for the website. Put that in. And then the other thing I'm going to put in is some parameters because I'm kind of going to want to reuse this command again. So I'm going to do dash O for overwrite, meaning true. So it's going to overwrite that directory. So now it's connecting to the website, to my environment. It's downloading all of my portal metadata to my local machine. The benefit of this is now that I could I can begin to edit and work with it in VS Code. And of course, I could always upload that up into a source control system. So now that we've downloaded, let's open up the folder. So I found my folder with my, my dev folder with my site. I'm going to select that. And then we see here we have all those icons. We have all our portal metadata organized nicely in VS Code and we can begin to work with it and begin to add our own assets. So we're going to start by adding some new assets and now we can do this directly in Visual Studio Code. We couldn't do that before. We would have to use the portal management app or the design studio. And I know there's some community tools out there that would allow you to do this, but now this is the official Microsoft way. So here I right clicked on the um, the assets and I'm creating a new content snippet. Um, I'm a big fan of using content snippets, especially for multilingual sites. It may, helps you manage your translations a lot easier. So here I've created a content snippet for the title of my page. My page is just going to be widgets. It's going to be text and an image. So we've created the title, widgets, explanation point. And now let's um, let just save that and let's actually create an other content snippet for the text that's going to be as part of our site. So now again, another content snippet, let's just call this widgets dash info. And what I'm just going to store in there again, I'm going to make this an HTML content snippet. It's creating it. And then I'm just going to go into the HTML file and I'm just going to paste whatever, you know, a bunch of different text doesn't really matter. I actually have some Laura Mipson text that I just grabbed off the web. And we've got that in our content snippet now, and that can really be anything you want. This is just straight text, but it could also be HTML, of course. We'll save that. And now that we've created that, the other thing we want to do is upload an image. So I'm going to create a new web file. Again, with the new menu system, I can create new assets, web files. I'm going to choose the home page as the parent page. 
and I'm going to just choose an image that I just downloaded off the web and that's just going to be our widget image that's going to upload that web file into my metadata and it's going to create a new node for the the web file itself so again 100% within Visual Studio Code I don't need to go out to the portal management app to create any of these assets so this already is saving me a ton of time so now that we've kind of got a bit of our content organized let's go in and let's take a look make sure it uploaded just gonna scroll down yep widget image JPEG um, so that file is now part of the portal metadata next thing let's go and create a brand new web template so again using the new command power pages gonna choose a new web template going to give the name of a web template. Now, I know everyone works a bit differently, but I like to keep a lot of my code and content within web templates. Oops, looks like I created one earlier. Let's try a different name. It's web template. Perfect. We'll just use that instead. Like I was saying before, I like to use web templates to hold a lot of my content, the structure of the page. And then also if I have any JavaScript and liquid and everything like that, as much as I can put into web templates, that's how I like to do it. It's maybe other people like to keep their content directly in the web page records, but that's you know another conversation for another day. So what I can do now is I can begin to create my web template within VS Code. Now I could do that before. Uh, VS Code has a little little oddities there when I was trying to create my block. So I'm going to create my block. Of course, if you've ever built web templates before, you know you need to keep your content within blocks. That's how the the liquid works. So we've created that initial structure. And now this is the cool part. So I can go in and I can begin to put in some content. Now I'm gonna hit Control Spacebar. Again, that's Control Spacebar. And that's going to give me um, the ability to see all of these liquid tags here. And not only all of these liquid tags that are specific, but also we can begin to inject different sections. So I'm just gonna put in a one column section and notice it filled in a lot of these values already. So we can really easily begin to structure our web page. So I'm just gonna move those uh, ending div uh, tags down a little bit. I'm just gonna make sure the content's there. And this is where we're going to put in our title. So of course, for the title of our page, we're gonna want that to be a little bit bold. So let's just use an H1. Let's do a little bit of styling here. We don't have to get too fancy. So um, yeah, choose style and again this is where VS Code is great because we can actually utilize the IntelliSense that's built in there let's do the text align let's do center um, and so I don't have to remember any of this it just comes up automatically so we've got that we put in our last tag and now let's we're going to again we're going to use the some of the new features of the the updates. So I'm going to again hit uh, put in some the the brackets there for our liquid tags, and I'm going to again hit Control Space, and it's going to show me a list of those liquid tags that are available. And I'm going to choose snippets. And of course, if you know liquid, you know that snippets will be able to pull those snippets. I'm going to put in the name, and this is where I'm going to put in my widget title. So again, it's going to pull that title from my snippet. And then it's going to pull it in whatever language my user is looking at it in. That's the great thing about content snippets. We can just translate in everything in content snippets, and then it's just going to display, doesn't really, whatever language the user's using. So a little bit lower down, I can, now I'm going to create a two column section, and automatically it in, injects that two column section, the same as if you would have added it as a component if you're using the Design Studio. Um, now to keep it a little bit clean with your code, you probably want to break it down a little bit. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just beginning to break out some of these sections, break out the different div tags so we can actually know where we can put <laughs> our content in between. That can be a little bit of a tricky part, but this is something that if you've already done some web development in the past, you really probably shouldn't find this too difficult at all. So I'm just going to structure my divs here just to make it a little bit more readable. Okay, that's cool. And what we're going to do in this two column section is we're going to create an image and we're also going to create the text. So first thing we're going to do is put in the image. So again, I'm just typing 
the HTML image. Let's choose the source. And because it's a web file, um, we're going to just put in the name of that web file. And actually, you see me, I'm typing in home. That's actually a mistake, and I'm going to go back and fix it later. Um, I'm just doing the voice over here, so a little bit of insider knowledge there. But taking a look at the web file, we want to find out what's the name of it. Let's just confirm it is widget image. So I'm going to type that in. And again, if you have keen eyes, you're going to see that I am going to make a mistake here. It should be web widget.img, but it turns out I type in widget image. So with the magic of um, post editing, I did fix this up later. What it just should be is straight up slash widget dash image JPEG. So if you're following along at home, don't put the home slash there. And then for the rest, it's just regular HTML um, with the image tag, the alt, let's just put in some alt there. Accessibility is important or if the image doesn't display, like if you make a mistake with the name or the pathing. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm going to put a little bit of extra styling in here. Um, again, with the built-in capabilities of VS Code, we can actually get a lot of this IntelliSense built in, which is just great because you don't have to memorize all this stuff. You can begin to kind of work with and build out all of your site by just typing in regular HTML. So I think we're pretty much cool there. Oh yeah, max, max height, max width. 100%. All right. So I'm just going to close that off. Cool. That part's done. So we have our image that's going to be on the left panel. And now we're going to add in our text below. And this is just a paragraph. So again, I'm just going to use the regular HTML paragraph commands. So. Again, P. And now again, remember we use the snippet, so I don't want to put like hard-coded text in here. So again, put it the brackets. Again, hit control space, type in snippets, and that fills that in. So it's kind of a handy reference. And now again, I'm going to put in the name of my widget, and that's widget info. If remember we created that content snippet earlier. So that pretty much is all there is to it in terms of building out that web template. Pretty straightforward. You know, maybe you could do this faster in Design Studio, but you got to remember if you're doing stuff like Liquid and JavaScript and doing much more complex web pages, which you would do in a Power Pages project, it's not all, you know, easy stuff sometimes. This would be the best place you could do it, and these tools really help speed that up. So before we move on to the next part, again, just a quick refresher for those of you who may not understand how everything's structured together. In order to get a web page, you're going to need something called a page template or a page layout. So when you create a page in the design studio, remember, you always usually pick a what we call a, a layout. Now, those layouts could be ones that are out of the box, but sometimes you want to create your own. And that's what we're doing with the web template. But before we can do that, we'll need to create a page template. And what basically it is, it's a pointer that connects the web template to the web page, and it determines whether or not you're going to have show your headers and footers on your web page or not, and a few other things. It was more of a legacy thing from the ADX Studio days where it would also point to a ASPX page that could be sitting on your IIS server. So that's why that's still there. So we're going to need to create a page template record and then we'll also create our web page our web page record that will point to those page template which points to the web template. Anyways, let's get going and start building that out. All right, so here we're going to create a new page template and again, we can do this directly within Visual Studio Code, which is great. We have to give it a name. So this is what's going to show up in the layout section if you were going to use in the Design Studio. So I'm just going to call it something simple like widget page template and widget is not really a power pages thing. It's just something I'm just kind of throwing out there for sample data. So I'm just going to enter and now we have to pick the web template. So that's why we created the web template first. So I'm going to scroll down that lists all my web templates. So there's my web template widget that we created and now it's creating that page template record. And the big thing we're looking at here, like I mentioned earlier, was the page template does the header and footer. We see that set to true here. We are going to use the header and footer. 
And that's all there is to it to create a page template. Now we're getting to the, the, the main event. We're going to create a web page. And again, this is pretty straightforward. We're using the Power Pages menu, new web page. We're going to give it a name. We're going to keep it super simple, just widget. And, we'll, and then we again, now we have to choose the page template. So there's that. Um, and then also the parent page. We're just going to choose home. And we could add more content here to the web pages, but again, I like doing it in web templates. And again, people have different different preferences. So we've done that. We've created the content. We only have one language provisioned. If we had multiple languages, we'd have multiple contents, but that there, that's all there is to it. And so now we have to upload it to our site. So once again, we're going to go into the terminal window. We're going to use our pack commands or power apps or power platform tools. PAP upload, name of the site from the folder. And there it's grabbing all of those assets and it's uploading those directly into Dataverse. It really doesn't take long, five seconds. And now we can go on to the next step. All right, so like I said before, we are not going into Design Studio, but I am going to the Power Pages homepage. So there's my site. I'm just going to hit Preview directly. Notice I'm not going into the studio. Let's hit Preview. Let's choose on the desktop. And this is going to show our site. Notice it added widget already to the main menu in the web links. That's great. And there we go. Our site's created. We have the title. We have the image. Um, we could probably go back and change the spacing, but there we go, 100% website web page created in Visual Studio Code. So if you want to learn more about uh, developing in Power Pages and as well as the Power Platform, here's an opportunity for you. In June at the European Power Platform Conference in Dublin, I am teaming up with MVP Ahmed Najjar um, from Norway, and we're going to be doing a workshop on the Power Platform. Um, Ahmed will be covering a lot more of the core Power Platform um, abilities. And then I will be diving in and covering a lot of the Power Pages developer tools and things like that, diving a lot deeper than what I've just shown you here today. So I'm literally looking forward to maybe seeing you there at that particular workshop. And if you're totally new to Power Pages, I highly recommend you come to my Build Power Pages in a Day. That's actually happening at the Iberian Technology Summit on April 28th in Portugal as part of the Iberian Technology Summit um, Summit. <laughs> so we're going to be covering basically ground up. If you've never touched Power Pages before, you're going to be able to walk out of there and be able to build a pretty powerful Power Pages site. So looking forward to seeing you there as well. So I hope you enjoyed this particular video on the new Visual Studio um, enhancements for building web pages in power pages in visual studio code without having to go into the design studio now the design studio is still you know your preferred way to create a lot of those pages and those layouts and your whole structure of your site but of course as you want to extend your power pages site you're going to have to incorporate a lot of pro developer techniques and using vs code and being able to build out all these assets directly in there is really helpful like i said my example is really simple we're just creating a web page but if you're getting into, as I mentioned earlier, building stuff out in Liquid, building things with JavaScript, adding some um, power up, some other one, the uh, code components and things like that, extending your site, you're going to be spending most of your time in VS Code anyway. So this sort of removes your jumping back and forth in between different tools. So looking very much forward to seeing what you're going to be building with Power Pages and these tools. And thank you for watching this video all the way to the end.